<laughs> it's a big ring you've got on there. Oh, oh my God. I Look, it's a green lantern ring. Really <laughs> actually, I did that because of your, even the green earrings. Oh, really? Yeah, that was very good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, what attracted you to do the green lantern? Uh, I'd never done a comic book movie before, so it was something different. I, was, I liked the character. Uh, I liked the tone of it. A little bit lighter than normal. A lot of, a lot of humor in it. Um, and also the fact we go to another world. We go outside of... We leave Earth and we go into the middle of the universe. But doing an adaptation of a comic book, uh, it's always a risky business because you have fans who either love it or hate it. Were you at all nervous about doing such an iconic theme? No, I, you're absolutely right. They do let you know very clearly that what they don't like. Um, but so far, I think that we've had a very good reaction from the fans on this. It follows the origin story, I think, very closely. And I think the Hal Jordan that um, Ryan creates is very like the Hal Jordan in the in the comics. So, um, you know, we had a little moment with the suit very early on. The fans, of course, rip you apart if they're not happy with the suit. Um, and I remember at Comic-Con, we sort of released the early version of the suit, and they weren't very happy about that. But then we continued working. It was a work in progress anyway. And I think we got the suit um, right in the end. Um, this is the fifth 3D movie that I myself have seen this year. Do you think this is the future of filmmaking? 3D? No, I don't. I don't think 3D is. I think it'll survive and I think there will always be 3D now, but I don't think it's the future of filmmaking. I personally prefer 2D. Me too. Uh, did you enjoy watching uh, The Green Lantern in 3D? Do you know, I was surprised how good it was. By that, I mean, we hand the film across to a company that makes it into 3D. Okay. Right, uh, so I have they show show us their works in progress. You know they're very good, uh, and I was surprised how good the three D looked on it. In the sense that I'd seen some earlier movies with post three D that I thought looked dreadful. I was surprised that it wasn't film three D because I really enjoyed the three D. Yeah, which means yeah. the technology has come a long way since, say, Clash of the Titans. You know, or the the early three D post three D um, processes. How was it to work with Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively? Yeah, I was lucky enough to have, you know, they were, first of all, they, they got on very well. And secondly, you always look for actors who can bring something beyond the script that, that will give. And uh, they certainly both did that. Ryan particularly is, um, you know, he brings his own sense of humor to it. Um, and we can improvise and we could do, you know, we could work the scenes to add to the, um, he's very talented like that. Your talk of humor, my favorite scene in the movie was when Carol uh, makes fun of Hal's mask because uh, he really doesn't, uh, doesn't conceal his identity. Uh, do you think that this intended irony uh, was also for other um, superhero movies? Yeah, it's, it's very good, uh, interesting you should say that. That was the whole point is, I mean, how does she not know it's Superman, please? You know, it's, it's like, of course they know. <laughs> There's this weird conceit that just because you have a mask, or, you know, like with Superman, th that you should not be recognized, you know. And it just seems crazy to me. And uh, so we just decided to t tackle it head on. So she walks up there and she realizes it's him in the, you know, in the green suit. And um, so it, it goes against the, you know, it goes against the normal um, conception of, of um, superhero movies. Uh, was self-irony important to, to you while you were doing the movie? Sure. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, the movie is about overcoming fear. Uh, can you relate? What are you afraid of? Well, first of all, I'm afraid, you know, I think everybody is afraid of failure, for example. In Hal's case, it's, you know, afraid of... Um, uh, he, he, he was uh, afraid to be... After his father's death, of course, is that you know dealing with all of that emotionally. He never wanted to experience that again. So his relationship with Carol is is uh, very tenuous because of it, um, and it's just really about overcoming your fear, right? Having the courage to overcome your fear, and in his case, he does, and of course becomes the greatest Green Lantern of all. Hal and Hector, they lead to a completely different life. The one, the pretty boy who the, has a cool job, job. The other one is the nerdy scientist who has to, who tries to please his father. Yeah. Uh, but they do have like a lot of in common. Um, well, daddy issues for a start. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how can you explain that? Well, I think it explains itself. I mean, they're, they're, you know, they're both, they're both run a parallel course. You know, they both have 
big insecurities about uh, uh, about what happened to um, uh, in Hal's case about what happened to his father um, in Hector's case about a domineering um, bullying father you know, who doesn't have much respect for his son because his son has never really um, become what he expected uh, so uh, so the daddy issue thing is, I mean, I know it's common in a lot of these, uh, in a lot of these superhero movies, but I think it works fine in this. Thank you so much. Good. Thank you. Thanks Thank very you. much.